I'm Craig Cormack and I'm the sole chef. I've been working on a journey for the past 12 years and hopefully it will be much bigger than what I dreamt. I grew up next to my grandmother's side watching her cook and then getting inspired by it. So I probably had it installed in me through, through my youth with her doing much cooking and my mother as well doing much cooking. Um, landed up in the military doing national service which I was compulsory back in the late 80s. Um, and I landed up in the kitchen and I never looked back. Uh, it's been the most amazing experience ever, so yeah. I uh, did a food uh, show out in uh, Stellenbosch, uh, which was the old Stellenbosch food and wine show. So I'd look around to see who's doing various food and wine pairings and try to create an amazing experience of three or four demonstrations per day. Uh, I always try to see how I could be more exciting than other chefs, but I found my own space. And then uh, I saw something with salt once and I thought, well, I don't know much about it. So I took three dishes uh, where we take salt into uh, account in the sense of preparation. And then from there, I then built this food, wine and salt experience. And I thought to myself, I need to kind of uh, explore it and see more or less if I can pick up some more information. And I started looking around and reading. I found an amazing book um, on salt called uh, A World History. 600 pages, took me like a year to read. Um, but when I found uh, spaces in there where it started talking about food, obviously then it starts to run, you get more excited about it. I started collecting salt without even knowing it. Um, so I'd phone around and I'd Google places and I'd ask lots of questions. I'd have all these replies come back. Who are you? What do you want from us? Because um, nobody's ever shown interest in salt. And um, so then I started collecting them. I had salt samples sent from all over the place. And I started getting these things through the post office back in the day, uh, like little bags of stuff. And then after like some bigger volumes of four and five kilos I was getting, uh, the stuff sort of got held up at the post office for months. And I think they must have thought it was some kind of drug being smuggled in, these white bags that were being shipped back and forth. So it was quite a chuckle actually to, to look at it. Um, but then I realized after about six, seven months that I actually started building a collection. And then it became more of an obsession to see how many I could get. And uh, sort of 10, 11 years later, I'm sitting at 184 natural occurring salts from all over the world, which is insane. Um, Who ever thought that? Everyone thinks it's sea salt or they think it's Cerebos and it's nothing like that. So local salts for me would be Baleni, no one's heard of it, it's known as a sacred salt. It comes from the north uh, east of our country, right next to the Kruger Park there is a little town called Baleni. And in the Shangan language, Baleni means salt. So uh, it's an amazing place, they make salt uh, from 2000 years worth of history. That tribe is still making today like they did 2000 years ago. I've been there, we've shot a whole pilot there, it's insane. Um, that's my favorite one, it's a very sandy color uh, salt. Uh, very intense, very strong because of the method that they use to prepare it. Each of the salts are salty. Some are like extremely salty and some are like sort of just salty as we know. Um, so to try and separate, I've tried to look at flavor, taste and smell and all of those. I've battled to try and pick it up. Um, they're so similar in many ways. Uh, but in general, my collection is really just for my own personal use. I do use some of those salts in certain dishes when it, the need is there. Uh, more to showcase like the exoticness of a particular salt. Um, but I reserve them mostly for my own personal preference, yeah. Um, but we do use probably six or eight on a regular basis. And again, South African salts is big for me because I'm very much into regionality and sort of proper cuisine and, you know, footprints and all those kind of things. It sounds all uh, tree hugging, but it's important. We need to appreciate that. Everyone thinks somebody's had an easy line somewhere, some people do, but in general most people have had to work for them. Somebody always said, oh that concept's so amazing, yeah it's been 12 years in the working and now we're only seeing the fruits of that starting to develop, but it's been consistently working towards it, pushing the whole time. Um, and yeah, just if you've got a goal, stick to it. And um, mine just became about the pleasure of watching people's reactions at salt dinners um, that inspired me to carry it on and knowing that no one's doing what I'm doing. And I really want to cement that mark in the world as my legacy, that I am the salt chef and I've come from South Africa. And it just shows you, South Africa produces amazing people. Um, I think because we have diversity and challenge that we land up pushing more. We always judge ourselves on the world. And I think we're actually better down here than somewhere in some of these amazing countries because we know what it's like to be or want something bad enough even from service levels in hotels or quality of food we're right up there in the best of the world so it's it's inspiring to see so we need to embrace our own culture our own people our own experiences our own journey because we have so much to offer here and we're blessed it's a beautiful country so